You've got a Tesla. For most of you, that means one thing, a daily driving that demands nothing. No oil changes, no spark plugs, no transmission fluid. The common wisdom is, it just runs. And for the most part, that's true. Unless you own one of our unique projects, your average Tesla really is designed to be a set it and forget it kind of car. I've been driving Teslas for 10 years and I've done zero preventive maintenance. At our TSK service center, we see dozens of Teslas monthly and most maintenance advice you hear online is pure garbage designed to separate you from your money. Today, I'm giving you the real advice, what actually matters and what's just expensive theater. Whether you are new to Tesla or you've been driving one for years, this will save you time, money and a lot of unnecessary worry. Your battery is the most expensive component, potentially costing $15,000 to replace. But here's the thing, Tesla has already figured out how to prevent you from killing it. The 20-80% charging rule is optimal, but you can charge more if needed. The crucial rule is this, never leave your car at 100% charge in direct sunlight. That's it. That's the only way you'll actually damage your battery. And if you wish to hear more about charging mistakes that can actually damage your battery, make sure to watch our recent video. You can charge to 100%. Just start driving immediately. Don't park it fully charged in the sun and walk away. LFP batteries are the exception. Tesla actually tells you to charge to 100% weekly if you have one. Temperature matters, but Tesla's navigation system already handles this. When you navigate to a supercharger, your car automatically preconditions the battery. Tesla has thought of everything to make it nearly impossible to kill your battery. Tesla paint is soft and modern car paint in general uses water-based formulas with minimal clear coat for environmental reasons. Every new car scratches easily with brush car washes. But unless you're planning to leave this car to your grandchildren, you can wash it anywhere. The car has anti-corrosion coating, it won't rust, nothing catastrophic will happen. Hand washing is ideal, especially if it's free because your kids do it every few days. Ceramic coatings and PPF protection films. We see super protected cars in our service center all the time. And guess what? We're replacing their super protected fenders, super protected hoods and super protected quarter panels because these super protected cars crash just like every other car. If you drive intensively, don't waste money on stuff that gives you nothing. PPF is only worth it for truly unique projects like our custom TSK builds. Regular Teslas don't deserve this expense. White interior, it's not even leather. It's synthetic and cleans incredibly easily. You can buy it even if you plan to sit in it with dirty clothes. Don't worry about it. Screen protectors? Only if you poke the screen with some kind of hooves instead of fingers. If you have functioning hands, you cannot damage this screen. It's nearly impossible. But if you're installing a screen protector anyway, get a matte anti-glare one that reduces reflections and fingerprints. That's actually useful. Tesla Glass has UV protection coating that prevents excessive heating. You only need roof shades if your car sits outside 365 days a year in intense sun with no garage, no parking structure, no shade anywhere. If you need shades, they're available on Amazon or AliExpress for almost nothing. <laughs> you can also switch auto cooling function in your settings. But remember, it will drain your battery down to 20% before automatically shutting off if you forget it on during long trips. If you're tired of maintenance fear-mongering, hit that like button. We're about to cover the only maintenance items that actually matter. Teslas wear tires faster than gas cars. Three reasons. The car is heavier due to the battery. Lower center of gravity means suspension works less, tires work more. Instant torque, whether front, rear, or all-wheel drive. As to recommendation to rotate tires every 6,000 to 8,000 miles, who's actually tracking their mileage that precisely? Just pay attention to your tires. Check them visually because you can wear them unevenly to the point of blowouts. Front tires wear faster if you take lots of turns. Rear tires wear faster if you have rear-wheel drive and love the accelerator pedal. Tesla's regenerative braking is so strong that some drivers never use mechanical brakes. But hopefully, this type of people aren't watching our channel. We talk about emotional, powerful cars here. Do updates under stable Wi-Fi only. 
do not update at airport pickup or drop off on bridges or in single lane traffic. I've made all these mistakes so learn from my errors. Update at home where if something goes wrong and you are stuck for 40 to 50 minutes you won't cause inconvenience to anyone. The only maintenance items. Don't ignore error messages on your screen. Change cabin air filters occasionally. You need to change something and there's nothing else to change. Clean your cameras and sensors regularly so they can show you who's scratching your car. This is the most useless section of any maintenance guide. Tesla has no dealers. You cannot get preventive maintenance from dealers that don't exist. If you see someone recommending preventive maintenance schedules, just move on. It's completely useless. I've driven Teslas for 10 years and have done zero preventive maintenance. The main message, Tesla maintenance equals no maintenance. Hit that like button if this information helped you, or rather if it helped you by not helping you waste time and money. Share this with your Tesla owning friends who need to hear the truth. What maintenance myth should we bust next? Let me know in the comments. And remember, if you're watching this channel, you probably have a powerful car. Don't forget to use that power, but watch out for tickets. Hey Tesla owners, let's talk about one of the most dangerous charging myths out there. The one even some experts online keep repeating. It's already cost several clients thousands of dollars in early battery replacements. At our service center, we see dozens of Teslas every month and honestly, it's frustrating to watch owners follow tips from YouTube that go against Tesla's own guidelines. So stick around till the end so you don't fall into the same trap that's already caught other drivers. The false advice you hear most of the time. Don't charge your Tesla every day. Don't keep the car plugged in all the time. This kills the battery because of constant stress. Sounds very logical, right? In reality, it's complete nonsense. What Tesla says officially? Tesla states clearly in the owner's manual. The single most important way to preserve the high voltage battery is to leave your vehicle plugged in when you're not using it. In the latest Cybertruck manual, Tesla is even more direct. Tesla strongly recommends leaving your Cybertruck plugged in when not in use. This keeps the battery at an optimal state of charge. Tesla also adds, the battery performs best with regular charging. There's no benefit to wait for the battery to run low before plugging it in. The truth about how the BMS works. Here's what actually happens. And what so-called experts don't understand. The BMS, battery management system, is always working, whether your car is plugged in or not. It's a critical safety measure. The BMS contains small BNB boards that divide the battery into segments, and each BNB board monitors every individual cell. Why charging cycles aren't a problem? Smartphones don't have space for battery cooling, so each charge and discharge puts a lot of stress on it. That's why it makes sense to count charge cycles in phones. But Tesla cars have advanced cooling systems, so regular charging doesn't hurt the battery. What really stresses a Tesla battery is letting it run too low or keeping it fully charged for too long. That's why with modern EV batteries, you don't need to count charging cycles. For LFP batteries, charging to 100% does not shorten their lifespan. It's a fundamentally different battery chemistry. From our experience and customer feedback, Tesla owners who plug in regularly, see very little battery wear, rarely have range issues and have stable battery system performance. On the other hand, owners who let their Tesla discharge before the next charging cycle more often report range loss, face problems with battery system calibration and visit service centers with battery health concerns. The danger of deep discharge. Tesla is clear. If the battery is discharged to 0%, other components may be damaged or require replacement, like the low voltage battery. And Tesla explicitly states, costs from deep discharge are not covered under warranty. When a Tesla battery reaches about 15% charge, it enters energy saving mode to protect itself from deep discharge. At close to 0%, the battery stops powering the onboard electronics entirely. So, where do the myths come from? The problem is that people apply experience from old lithium-ion batteries to Tesla's modern systems. But Tesla uses advanced thermal management and complex BMS with thousands of sensors. 
It utilizes machine learning algorithms to optimize charging, not to mention ongoing software updates. So basically your 2010 iPhone and a 2024 Tesla are worlds apart in technology. Healthy charging habits. For daily use, just plug in your Tesla when you get home and set your charging limit to around 70 or 80 percent. Keep the car plugged in all the time. It's totally safe. Once a week, let it charge up to 90 or even 100%, especially if you have an NCA or NCM battery. If your Tesla has an LFP battery, charging to 100% once a week is not only safe, it's actually recommended by the manufacturer. If you're storing your Tesla for a long time, keep it plugged in, lower the charge limit to about 50 or 60% and turn off sentry mode to save energy. And remember, if you're going on a road trip, charge to 100% before you leave. If you don't have access to charging, just be mindful and conserve energy until you can plug in again. The most expensive Tesla repair is battery replacement. A used battery costs from around seven to $15,000, depending on the model. And there are no new batteries available on the market. The cheapest battery maintenance is simply following the manufacturer's official recommendations because they're based on thousands of hours of testing and millions of miles driven. If this information saves you from a costly mistake, share it with your Tesla owning friends. They've probably heard some harmful myths too. Subscribe to our channel to get trusted EV insights based on real service experience and official recommendations. In the next video, I'll bust more Tesla myths that cost owners money. Comment below with any expert advice about Tesla that makes you skeptical. So, you bought a Tesla and still treat it as a gas car? Driving to a supercharger every few days, paying twice as much and thinking, this is how it's supposed to work. I get it. Many people ask about superchargers in the comments. And I think it's time to reveal the truth. Relying only on superchargers and skipping home charging is not the smartest move. And by the way, according to our channel view statistics, you guys aren't really fond of our wild custom builds. Well, fair enough. We respect and follow your preferences. So today we're covering the basics. Let's see if this video will save you time and money. Here's a statement you've probably never heard. According to the US Department of Energy, 80% of EV charging happens at home. Tesla surely knows that better than anyone else, but they prefer not to mention it often. Why? Because they've invested billions in the supercharger network, and of course they want to make profit out of it. We've been repairing Teslas for over 10 years. What I'm about to share with you isn't pulled from marketing brochures. This is real-world data from real drivers with real Teslas. Here's what you'll learn today. Why even the weakest outlet in your garage can save you hundreds every month. How to build a simple home setup that makes superchargers unnecessary. And the real charging statistics Tesla doesn't like to advertise. But if you love waiting in line at charging stations, overspending and planning your life around superchargers, this video is probably not for you. If you'd rather make your Tesla work for you, then stick around. Also, if you enjoy our videos, please give them a like and consider subscribing. We regularly share useful and unique content. The more feedback we get from you, the more motivated we are to keep creating. Let's talk about money. Tesla is a public company. The supercharger network is their business. According to Bloomberg Neff, it could bring in over $7.4 billion in revenue by 2030. Let's take Los Angeles as an example, just because it's easier for me to break it down. If you're charging at home, it costs about $7.50 for every 100 miles you drive. You can save even more by setting your charging schedule to off-peak hours, when electricity is cheaper. Now compare that to a supercharger in Los Angeles. Charging there can cost you around $190 for 1,000 miles. That's almost three times more expensive than home charging. 
not to mention idle fees if the car is left plugged in after charging is complete. So the cost difference is significant and it really adds up. Plus, you usually have to drive some extra miles just to reach a supercharger, which means even more time and costs. Now I see a lot of concerns about home charging and honestly, most of them just don't hold up. First, there's this belief that you need some super expensive equipment to charge your Tesla at home. That's just not true. If you've got a regular outlet in your garage that can handle 12 to 15 amps, you're basically set. Most garages already have exactly what you need. No fancy gear required. Then there's the home charging is way too slow complaint. But here's the thing. Even if you're using a basic outlet that pulls 9 to 12 amps overnight, it is usually enough to cover your daily driving. It's actually cheaper, super convenient, and it doesn't eat up your time. You just plug in when you get home and wake up ready to go. And finally, some people think that using superchargers all the time won't hurt the battery. Look, Tesla's battery cooling and protection systems are great. But at the end of the day, fast charging still puts more stress on your battery than regular charging at home. Supercharging is really designed for road trips and emergencies, not for your daily routine. Tesla knows many people treat their car like a gas vehicle, roll up to charge when empty. They're not trying to scare off new buyers with talks about outlets, amps, and required planning. But if you plan ahead, even a little, and figure out a spot to charge overnight, you'll save a ton and live stress-free for years. Step one, find an outlet. Pause this video, go to your garage, got a 110, a 220, or maybe a 380 volt outlet. You're almost set. Good news, Tesla can work with any of them. There are adapters for basically every type of plug. The cheapest standard Tesla cable handles 5 to 32 amps. 32 amps is more than enough, even for rideshare drivers. We'll cover more advanced home charging setups in a future video. But right now I'm giving you the simplest and cheapest way to start. Here is what you get with home charging. No more time wasted waiting at chargers. You stop thinking about how far your car goes each day because it's always enough. You won't know your actual range because it will always be enough for the day. You save money and time. For those of you who didn't find an outlet or the garage itself, that's okay, you're not chained to your apartment. Look for apartment complexes with EV chargers or look for shared parking with plugs. There are always options. After switching to home charging, you cut your charging costs in half. You stop planning your day around supercharger stops. Your battery is under less stress. And every morning you wake up with a full tank. Use superchargers occasionally, mainly for road trips or if you're not subscribed to this channel. Like the video if it was helpful. Share this with other Tesla owners. Subscribe if you want more tips. And probably you are interested in more fun content which we sure have on our channel. <laughs> Drop a comment. What questions do you still have? What topics should we cover next? And remember, Tesla is a smart car, so use it smartly.